All right. Well, welcome everyone and welcome officially to UCLA School of Dentistry. We're so excited to have you join us in a few months. Um, I'm sure that you have a lot of questions about what to expect at this point. I know we all did when we were in your shoes. And so this is just a chance for us to answer the typical questions that we had when we were in your stage. Um, and then you're welcome to ask us any questions at the end. So this will be a presentation for the first part and then a Q&A for the second part. Um, but first, we'll introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Jackie, along with my classmate, Ethan. We are both uh, current D2s and the current co-chairs of ASDA Pre-Dental Outreach. We'll explain what that means later on, but it's one of the clubs here at UCLA SOD. Um, Ethan can't join us today, but we are joined with all six of our D1 uh, committee members and they'll introduce themselves now. So we might as well go from the left to make it easier. Sorry. Um, hi, my name is Jocelyn and I'm also, I'm a D1 at UCLA. Yeah. Oh, and um, sorry, I was gonna add, I'm from NorCal. So any fellow NorCal people, yeah, feel free to reach out if you have questions. Cause I think things like finding, um, yeah, finding housing here and like just not knowing the area well was a big challenge for me. Hi guys, I'm Adeline. I'm from San Jose, so NorCal as well. And I graduated from University of the Pacific in 2021. Hello, my name is Sarah. I'm also from NorCal. I'm from Santa Cruz. Um, I graduated from University of Massachusetts Amherst in 2019. And I'm also a D1. Hi everyone, I'm Brian. I'm also a D1. I'm from UC Irvine and I grew up in Orange County, so it's not too far from here. Hey, hello, everybody. Uh, congrats, first of all, to all the class of 2026. Um, my name is Jordan. I am also D1. I attended the University of the Pacific for undergrad, and I'm from Sacramento, so also NorCal. Hi, guys. I'm Olivia. Um, I graduated from the University of Virginia in 2020, and I'm actually from Michigan. So if anyone has any questions about being out of state or establishing residency here, um, I'd be happy to help. Um, and I'm also a D1. Totally jumped the gun about intros. Um, <laughs> I went to UC San Diego and graduated in 2017. And I am also from Northern California. And then Ethan was UCSD grad as well. So major go Tritons, woot woot. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started first with probably one of the bigger topics, it's housing. So take it away, guys. All right, so we actually have a couple of on-campus housing options. Um, the first two that we'll talk about is Weyburn, which I actually live in currently, and then Hillgard. And so the really nice thing about living on campus, one reason I kind of chose on campus um, while being out of state is that there's a really nice support system here in Weyburn. Um, I think we have about 25 or 30 students from the class of 2020 um, who live here. Um, it's super close to campus. It's about a 10 to 15 minute walk to the dental school, um, 20 minutes if you like to take your time. Um, and then Hillgard is actually right around the corner from campus. Um, so it's probably about a five minute, 10 minute walk maximum. Um, and all of them are fully furnished. So you don't have to worry about going shopping for a big couch or any big ticket items, everything's here. Um, but with that comes a con that you don't necessarily get to style anything. Um, it's possibly a little outdated. I think my floor has um, orange tile. Um, so very, very eclectic, um, but you still make it your own. It's still a very fun um, space to be in. Um, and then also with everything being furnished, um, all of your utilities are also included. So you don't have to worry about trash, cable, internet, electricity, um, any of that. Um, but 
at the same time, if you're on campus, you still have an RA, which has been cool. We'll have like barbecues um, or movie nights. Um, I feel like there hasn't been too much to do recently just because of COVID, um, but I know they're really trying to um, start some more um, fun events to do. Um, and then another pro about living in Weyburn or Hillgard is you do have the option to either be in a studio or there's two options for a two bed, two bath. So you can either have like an apartment style or a townhouse style. So I'm in a studio. Um, so it's very quaint, very small, um, nice to be by myself. But if you want a roommate, um, the nice thing is, is that you guys will have two separate leases. So if anything were to happen, um, you don't necessarily have to be held liable. Um, and then the one downside to being out here is if you do want a car, which actually a lot of our classmates have cars this year. Um, I was pretty shocked about it. Um, parking is not included and you do have to pay quarterly. I think it's about $324 a quarter. So it does add up, um, but it's still very convenient to have your car in the little garage um, right around the corner. Um, and yeah, so living on campus is a really nice introductory way to meet people, be close to campus and kind of have everything right there. Um, and then if we go to the next slide, I think it'll just show you the breakdown of the monthly rates. Um, so Hillgard, I think is kind of difficult to get an apartment. Um, if you do want a studio, Hillgard is the place to be. They only have studios. Um, Weyburn is the one that's gonna have the apartments or the townhouses, um, and they have plenty of them. I think we have maybe 10 buildings here. That's a total guess, um, but lots of different buildings on this side of campus um, with plenty of apartments and they're actually putting up more. Um, and so that breakdown is about $100 to $150 difference between having a studio versus um, sharing an apartment with someone. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> so another, another uh, housing opportunity for, I guess, dental students is the Boulevard, which is considered University Apartments South. Um, yeah, so there's a picture there of the boulevard. The boulevard, I think, includes like four or five buildings, but basically two, two buildings are like the big main ones. And then that's where all the dental students that I know live. And then there's like two other buildings that they're all in the same location on the same street, but they're just smaller, I guess. Um, I believe the boulevard, so, Okay, okay, sorry, never mind. So the boulevard is nice because it's contemporary, it's modern, it's clean. Um, it has nice amenities like the pool, hot tub, uh, study areas. It has like a common area. It has barbecue pits, kind of like a rooftop area and it has its own gym. Um, and it is located conveniently right above Target. So basically the first floor is Target and then the second, third and fourth floor uh, are like all apartments. Um, all of the units do come with a washer and dryer, which is definitely a big plus. Uh, it's fair pricing in comparison to other apartments around apartments around West LA because it's it's still considered graduate housing. Um, it is further from campus, so you'd have to either drive. It's not walkable. You'd either have to drive or take the bus, which a lot of people do do. Um, the bus is free, like for students, for UCLA students, uh, or a lot of students carpool as well. So parking is included at the boulevard, but if you are gonna have your car here and are planning to drive to campus, you still have to pay for um, parking on campus. And then, uh, yeah, so there's no RAs, which I guess could be a pro or a con. Um, so they're not like strict or anything, but there is like security in the area because uh, it's still graduate housing and it's like located in like, I guess, a pretty public area around Santa Monica. Um, but yeah, the boulevard is nice. I live here right now and I currently live in a studio. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they 
they're like gonna cater it towards dental students because I think uh, UCLA Med actually owns the place. They bought it, they bought the Boulevard, I believe two years ago, um, just from private owners. And so they've been catering it towards med students. But then I think last year they had extra spots open in studios and two bedrooms. So they offered it to some first year dental students and like a couple engineering students. So basically the Boulevard is mostly med students, um, residents, med residents. Uh, yeah, anything of that sort. I think some med faculty as well, but there are about 11 D1s uh, that live here now. And then I know one D2 that lives here, but I think it's basically um, offered to D1s if they have openings. If they don't, it's, it's basically for medical students. Uh, I would try to look into more about how it's going to be like distributed. If you are interested in the in living here at the Boulevard, you can reach out to me as well. Uh, yeah, and then so this slide just has pricing. So there's studios, uh, studio lofts. You can get one bedrooms, one bathroom, um, and two bedrooms, two bathroom, and three bedrooms as well. I believe the three bedrooms are in like the two smaller buildings, but yeah, uh, pricing wise, I think it's pretty uh, fair compared to other like apartments in the area and what you're paying for essentially. Okay, next we're gonna be talking about off-campus housing. Um, I personally live in an off-campus apartment, but I'm actually closer than students that live in Weyburn. I live like two blocks away from the dental school, so I get to campus pretty quickly. It takes me about like less than 10 minutes to be like in the school itself. Um, some pros about living off campus is that it can be cheaper depending on um, where you're looking. Obviously, the further that you get away from like UCLA, it's probably going to be cheaper. Um, but it all just kind of depends on timing when you're looking to. And what's nice is you kind of get some more independence. You don't have an RA like you would at Weyburn, but the Boulevard is also another option if you're looking for like university housing with a little bit more independence. Uh, parking spots are usually included. I get a free parking spot with my lease. It is uh, gated and there is like security that monitors it throughout the night. And a lot of apartments are pet, pet friendly. So that's the main reason why I personally didn't live at Weyburn. Technically, you're, I don't think you're supposed to have animals, but I think people do, which that's awesome because having a pet in dental school is really nice. Some cons though about living off campus is that most likely people do tend to live further than Weyburn. I think I got lucky. So you may have to commute and it does cost money to get a parking permit for campus. So keep that in mind. And it can initially be challenging to meet people since a lot of our student or a lot of our classmates do live at Weyburn. It makes it easier for all of them to get together or they might all study together. Um, I think it was a little bit different this year, though, because of COVID, we were all kind of isolated from each other at the beginning. And you must furnish it yourself. Some places do have like fully furnished options, but they will be more expensive. And for me, I actually like furnishing my apartment. I enjoy like the creative part of it. I had a lot of fun doing it. And I knew that I was going to be living off campus uh, from pretty early on. So I was able to keep an eye out and found really good deals for a lot of my furniture, which made it a lot like nicer in terms of um, financial aspect. And if you are commuting, um, there is traffic in the morning. So I know that people, for example, that like commute from home, it can take them up to like an hour, hour and a half to get to campus in the morning. And that also kind of transitions to like when they leave school, uh, now that we're back in person, we have to be on campus pretty much every single day. And sometimes we'll finish early in the afternoon or around like three o'clock, but they'll wait because traffic is bad. And sometimes they'll be on campus until maybe like eight o'clock or something, just so that way they don't have to sit in traffic. Um, and when you do live at home, obviously it can help save a lot of money, but just be aware that it does take a lot of time out of commuters days to get to and from campus. 
All right, um, and now we'll transition to the fun part of dental school, um, the financials. So um, first things first, cost of D1 kit. This is um, kind of the first thing you'll have to pay once you get here to UCLA. Um, you buy it during your orientation week and the initial cost is about $14,500, but with tax, it reaches almost 16,000. And you can either pay it all straight up or you can use a payment plan, which has a 7% interest rate. Um, you do have to pay 20% down and then the rest you can pay over nine months. And a little hack that we learned this year um, was you can actually do the payment plan, but if you pay more than a month in advance for each payment, then you don't actually have to pay the interest cost. So you save about $400 after everything's settled. Um, and then on the website, they do have like a section for your projected costs, which includes like your book supplies instruments. And it says 21,673. And that kind of includes any um, costs that you don't really have in the kit, as well as your loops. Um, it's a bit of an overestimate from what I've seen so far, but it's still a pretty high number once you add it all up. And then this is kind of just a little screenshot of what your payment plan will look like. So the initial down payment is paid here. This was from this year. So the first payment was 915, which is during our orientation week. Um, and then everything after that is over the course of three or nine months. And then it ends in June. So um, in terms of financial aid, the first thing we all have to do is um, apply for FAFSA. And whether or not you think you'll qualify for um, financial aid, it's best that you still apply and include your parents' information because there's a lot of free money that's not need-based. So things like the dentistry grant, um, it's like almost a guaranteed $6,500 every year. Um, you can also get a health professions loan, which is $8,000 a year. And that has a fixed interest rate of 5%, which is really nice because interest, um, it's, it goes up every year. Um, and then some important papers you have to include are papers including income that you have and then income that your parents have. And then you, if you don't have any income to report, you do also have to get a non-filers verification form from the IRS. And this is something that um, can be kind of hard to get if the local offices are like really unresponsive. I think um, Jocelyn the other week or this week had to like drive quite a bit after one of her classes to get it because they weren't replying to like any phone calls or emails or anything. So try to get that done early if you can so you don't really have to deal with that later because it does get a little stressful. But then after you submit all your papers, you basically just wait and then um, you'll eventually get your grants and your loans and you'll see what you want and what you need and then you can accept and decline each um, option that they give you. And then it's best that you also include all your bank information so that you get all your loans and grants directly to your account and then they automatically pay um, everything to your My UCLA as well. And then there's other opportunities for free money. So the Dean Scholarship, it's um, usually given at the time of your acceptance, your caller probably notified you about it if you did get it. And it's about $20,000 and it's a merit-based scholarship. And then the dentistry grant is need-based. Um, there's also, but you do have to include your parents' information for that one. Um, during your D1 year, there's also opportunities to apply for different scholarships. Um, and they're all based on just like you and your time at UCLA. So it's really nice because especially during D1, um, a lot of us don't have like a lot under our belt. So it's really easy to actually get a lot of the scholarships. You just apply and um, you'll never know what you get. So it's really good to just apply for all of those. And they're all coming directly from UCLA. Um, and then some other free options that you can apply for are the NHSC scholarship um, and the HPSP. And these are both scholarships that um, you commit a certain amount of years after dental school and they'll pay for whatever amount of years you commit. So if you do like four years of school during dental school, then afterwards you'll just serve for four years. Um, and then there's two types of loans, the direct unsubsidized loan. This is the lower interest rate of the loans. Uh, and this is the one that will be the bulk of your loans. And this 4.3% was last year and it was actually like one of the really lower loan rates because of COVID. Um, right now, I think it's 5.3. And then next year, I think it's projected to be like 6.3 or something like that. So every year it kind of goes up. But the good thing is um, 
for now at least all interest payments are halted so we don't have to accrue interest while we're in dental school but eventually that's going to go away and we're going to accrue interest once COVID gets a little better and then you do get a small portion of your loans from grad plus loans and this is um, something that you don't necessarily have to accept because it is a little bit higher of an interest rate, but if you do need it for your package, then you can accept it as well. It's usually 1% more than the direct unsubsidized loan, and it goes towards just anything you need as well. And then lastly, this is kind of the website that you can go on to um, have any of your frequently asked questions answered. You can also email Connie She's our main financial aid advisor and she's super cheery, super helpful, and she'll be glad to help you with anything you guys need. Oh, and then this is kind of the total of your first year cost estimate. So tuition is $48,751 for your first year. Your dental kit, um, one thing to note about this is that you do have to pay for this before your loans get come in. So it's best to save up at least the amount for the down payment because um, when that time comes, you'll have to pay it. And it's it's like a little bit stressful because um, a lot of us didn't know that. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind that you do have to pay that before you get your loans. And then you do kind of get reimbursed like within the next month once your financial aid does come in. Um, cost of housing is around 1500 to 2000. That's more on the steeper end. There's definitely places um, associated with UCLA. I think Rose Boulevard is one of them. That's like $1,000 but um, you do have to keep into account like traffic and distance because again, like people do wait on campus for traffic to die down, which kind of sucks um, compared to like just living at like the Boulevard or Weyburn or somewhere close off campus like Sarah. And then cost of living is really up to you. If you budget well, then it won't be that much. Um, I think the first few months will be a little harder to budget because everyone's like trying to go out. Fall quarter is usually your most free quarter of D1. So you wanna make the most and meet everybody. But after that, just make sure your budget well and you'll be totally fine. And then loops are also really important. They're required and you have to buy them from the school. Um, the least expensive option is $900 and the most expensive is $3,000. Um, you can either pay it all at once or also do a payment plan. And we have like kind of a day at the beginning of the year where we go and meet different reps from all the loop companies and we try them all on, see which ones we like and which settings we want for each one. And then we kind of choose from there and then start a payment process. Forgot to turn on my mic. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna talk about um, our D1 class schedule. Um, a bit more exciting maybe than um, all of the payments that you have to do during orientation. Um, so for us, we still transitioned in during COVID. Um, so the two classes highlighted in red were the only classes that we ended up having in person. Um, so we had gross anatomy, um, which is a cadaver lab, um, and then our anatomy waxing lab. Um, and so those were both four hours, um, each of them. Well, anatomy lab was actually twice a week and then waxing was once a week. Um, and then all of the other classes we had online, but I believe you guys will have everything in person. Um, so we just have fundamentals of oral hygiene, um, which you just learn about dental caries um, and kind of the, um, <laughs> the um, bacteria that cause them. Um, and then we have life course, which is an awesome class where you get to meet all of your classmates and kind of do a little like um, analysis of yourself and other classmates. Um, foundations of basic science is gonna feel like your typical college bio, microbio, um, just like a hard science class. Um, population health, um, is also a really chill class. Um, same with dental morphology. That's kind of fun because you start to line up what you're learning in waxing um, with the tooth anatomy um, and then dental materials is also gonna help you in future labs. Um, and so then if we look at the schedule, um, it does look a little bit daunting, um, but if you look closely, you have a lot of unscheduled and independent learning time um, and then we actually got split up into A groups and B groups for gross anatomy. 
Um, I believe it'll be the same for you guys coming in. So you'll only have lab um, twice a week, um, even though there's the four spaces. Um, so you'll actually have two afternoons off a week, um, which is really nice. Um, and you'll have Friday afternoon off too, which is always fun. Um, so even though it looks a little crazy, you guys will get through it. And we have a lot of collective um, study guides, quizlets, and things that we'll be able to pass down to you guys. And then I'm sure your classmates are going to be super willing to share um, and help out. Um, and you'll probably see all of those materials on your class Slack and then the Google Drives that we pass down to you guys. Um, but yes, classes are going to be amazing. You'll have Dr. Miller. Um, I can see everyone's raving about him in the chat. You'll have him for gross anatomy and he will most definitely be the best professor you've ever had. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I don't know what <laughs> yes. Hold oh, on. You lost the slide. Yeah, a lot of us, um, some of us, sorry, some of us are taking the selective right now. So you get cadavers for anatomy um, that you get to dissect or not dissect, but like um, use as like a learning tool. And so the year before you will be able to dissect them beforehand and then we give them off to you. So I'm in the anatomy selective right now with Dr. Miller and it's, it's so much fun. I really like Dr. Miller. He's so sweet. Yeah. And his lectures are so well organized. They're like formatted in a way that there's like hyperlinks, like test yourself questions. Like it's so straightforward. Like I think anatomy is like one of those classes where it's really hard, but you have all the resources in front of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit about some of the clubs that we have here at UCLA. Um, it's a very daunting list, of, um, but you'll have all this information later. So you don't, you don't have to worry about it right now, but uh, we can kind of split up all of the clubs into, I think, like four main categories. So we have student culture clubs, academic clubs, and then later we have service and fraternity clubs. And so you're free to join any of these. Um, yeah. And even if you're not a member, you're still allowed to go out to a lot of the events that these clubs have. So a lot of the clubs, especially the academic and study clubs, have uh, things called lunch and learn. So during the hour of lunch break that you have, you'll either join like a Zoom link or you can go in person and they'll have like a guest speaker usually and they'll talk about um, that particular specialty or that subject. And so I highly recommend joining a lot of these clubs, especially as a D1, because you can just go out to all the meetings, even if you're not an official member, and then you can kind of see what interests you and then kind of narrow down your interests um, as you like continue on with the quarters. And so if you go to the next slide, we also have clubs that are related to service and also fraternities. So the service clubs, there's like so many volunteer opportunities here. Like every week they have emails sent out from all the different clubs that will be like, oh, we're looking for this many dental students who are willing to go um, provide OHI or just be a volunteer. Um, if you're a D1 and D, uh, if you're a D1, you mostly help out with like the more basic stuff. And then as you go up like D3, D4s, they can actually do treatment, but it's a really good opportunity. I highly recommend, even if you're not in that club, you can join their um, service events and their volunteer events. And then the fraternities, we have two, which are called Alpha Omega and Psi Omega. Alpha Omega is more like academically based. And so I'm in Alpha Omega right now. And something that I really appreciate is they have mock practicals for us. So you have practicals for your lab classes where you have to like drill a certain or do something within that certain time. Um, but they'll host like a little mini mock practical like the week before and you can kind of practice and see how you would do. And then Sci Omega is a social frat, but it's super fun. They hold super fun events. Um, there was like a formal last quarter and different social events like the they hosted like a thing for the USC versus UCLA game. Uh, last quarter as well. So I highly recommend if those interest you, you can join. Okay. And so there's the American Student Dental Association. I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably already heard that, heard of that. Um, but basically it's a student run organization and yeah, it, it gives you a lot of like advocacy, representation, different information about dental students, um, education, uh, community service opportunities. It basically provides you like your essential foundation. And I believe everybody is automatically like a part of it, enrolled in it. 
Um, and then at UCLA, we have a list of committees. So we have a whole bunch that you can see here. Um, and yeah, so basically the, like us uh, six, we're a part of the pre-dental outreach. So that's part of the pre-dental outreach committee for uh, ASDA. Okay, and then, yeah, so feel free to join like all the clubs if you want. Um, you don't, like Adeline said, you don't have to be a part of the club in order to attend meetings. Uh, because of COVID, and I guess how everything is nowadays, a lot of the meetings are over Zoom. So it's kind of like a lunch and learn. You can just join on your phone or join on your laptop over Zoom. Um, but it seems like more and more meetings are going back into person, which is nice, uh, more interactive. Um, yeah, but you meet a lot of people, similar interests. You can meet upperclassmen that are also part of the club, which is always cool. You're always surrounded by your fellow like, classmates, your like, other D1s. But if you can meet other D2s, D3s, and even D4s, it's really nice. Uh, you can get involved with different service events, a lot of community service opportunities, depending on the club. Um, if you want to run for positions in the club, president, vice president, secretaries, you can always do that, gain leadership experience, uh, build up your resume, if that's what you're interested in. Um, yeah, and then there's lunch and learns. You can learn about different specialties. You can learn a lot about general dentistry as well. And you can gain selective units, which could be super helpful uh, down the line. So student life, so just I think an important thing in dental school is just making sure that you're like not just on top of your classes, but because we have so many classes, I think it's important that like you have to make time for yourself, like schedule, schedule time where you can go have fun or like, you know, just decompress like at home, maybe. Um, so just uh, I think you have to pick and choose your battles. So, you know, you can't be studying all the time. Like you're always, there's always something that you're gonna be slightly behind on because there's just so many classes we take in dental school. And you also have to go into lab to practice like the uh, preps you see on the right hand corner. So just, um, yeah, just make sure uh, you take advantage of our collaborative atmosphere because we have our pass, no pass and honors greeting. So I think that really like, alleviates a lot of the stress because uh, you're able to um, like honors it's for top 10 percent of the class but honors is like I think I think a good mindset for honors is just like to just try as hard as you can but definitely like as long as you pass you'll be okay like I think residency a lot of upperclassmen have said residencies like a lot of them don't even really know what honors means so like honors is nice like to like get rewarded for trying really hard, but also keep in mind that as long as you pass, like you'll you'll be fine. So just make sure you just make time for yourself. And yeah, the class Slack is very, very helpful because I remember um, during like micro, <laughs> we had a real, we had microbiology last quarter and it was a really, really hard class. So um, like the, our, a few days before the the final like everyone was just sharing all their study guides all their like Anki decks quizlets like it was really really nice like I was like wow I really love our class during like the finals week last quarter so yeah it's really really nice um to have all your classmates go through the same classes as you and everyone's just struggling together but it makes it fun like you're best but it'll be fun <laughs> Um, so wait, is this one mine or yours? Oh, uh, uh, mine. <laughs> the next one, the intramural. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, so the student life. So yeah, I mentioned earlier, like just don't try not to stress about things that you can't control, and then just make sure you, um, make sure when you're struggling, just know that like everyone is also struggling. So like it, what we're doing, it takes time. Like hand skills, drilling, all this stuff, like there might be like one or two people in your class that are really, really, really good at hand skills, but um, most people are, won't pick up a drill and like be perfect on their first try. So just make sure like you give yourself some slack. And 
Yeah, like the upperclassmen, uh, they're really, really helpful here. And they're always here to help. They're like, you can ask them any question and they'll give you like some really, really good advice. Like when whenever we go into lab, uh, whenever I go into lab outside of hours, like after class um, to practice, there's always like some sort of upperclassmen floating around and they're just always come up and ask like, oh, do you need help? Like, oh, I could give you a tip on like how to prepare like this um, number 19 or something like that, which the uh, molar back here. <laughs> but yeah, so it's really, really nice. And also I think the D1 and uh, D2, like big little pairings, uh, we'll do the art class, will do that for you guys before orientation. Um, you guys will fill out a Google form like with your interests and everything. And we'll pair you based on that with uh, one of someone from our class. So I think that was really um, another really good way that uh, UCLA was able to like help incorporate and like ease us into dental school. And so um, dental school, there's so much more than just classes though. There's also like leadership positions like Jordan mentioned, there's clubs, um, the class cabinet, if you're interested in like uh, being the voice of your class and just helping your class, uh, helping your class uh, address like any struggles they have with the administration or with how things are done or with even with classes the class cabinet is a good um, a good place to start if you want to help your class like that so the class cabinet and elections just uh, they start in the very beginning of the year like I believe like two weeks in so if you're interested just you can reach out ask one of us ask I think Jackie is actually VP of her class right so you could reach out to Jackie. She probably knows a lot more about that. Yeah. And study clubs, there's also like D1 class representative. So you just sort of, that's a good way to ease yourself into the clubs as well. Okay, now it's my turn. Sorry, Jocelyn. <laughs> um, so on campus, there's like a lot of fun things that you can do outside of like school and academic based stuff. Intramural sports is one of my favorite things to get involved with. I don't know if you guys participated in your undergrad um, school, if they had these, but pretty much each quarter they'll release different sports. Some of them they kind of do um, like all the time, but other uh, quarters, it might be like a special sport just for that quarter. So the dental school is actually like very active. It's kind of awesome because everyone, um, there's pretty much always like a team for each sport or if people want to make a team for something, a lot of people are always like willing to join. Our school is very good at soccer. So this um, picture that was like the D3 team, they won in futsal and um, I was on the D1 team and we were in the same bracket and we were both like in the, um, in the champion or not championship, but like in playoffs, but then we didn't make it past and they ended up winning, which it was still awesome because the dental school still technically won. So we like to take it kind of seriously, but other people also, you know, a lot of people just do it for fun. I know our class, we have a ton of basketball teams, so people really enjoy it. Um, there's also um, like rec classes that you can take on campus through the gym, wooden gym. And then also Ken Ross is a grad gym that um, the graduate students like the dental students have access to. So that one's really nice. We always see so many classmates there. A lot of us go routinely and they help keep you accountable, which is really nice and helpful because it's really easy to get so sidetracked when you have such a busy academic life. And then there also is like um, pools on campus, tennis courts, there's the track at the Drake Stadium. So there's lots of different ways that you can go and enjoy your time here at UCLA that's not just academic base. And then a lot of clubs will also host um, like runs and hikes. So if that's something that you enjoy doing, always be on the lookout for that. I participated in the Perio, um, Perio Dash the other quarter. Same with um, Jackie, we both did that. I hadn't run in so long. So <laughs> we ran together, but she was way more in shape than I was. Oh, so it was a shuffle. <laughs> Not a run, it was a shuffle. Yeah, it, we were like 
yeah, <laughs> it's crazy how fast some people in our class are, but it's really fun. So you guys will have a intramurals representative um, in your class cabinet. And so they can kind of help coordinate teams too, if you guys um, are interested in that. Oh, yeah, so continu continuing on, so just this whole section of student life has just been um, make sure you make time for yourself outside of dental school and classes and lab. Um, so make sure the yeah, we're in LA, UCLA. Um, we're right in the heart of LA. There's so many fun things to do around here. So um, if you have, if you need suggestions, like I'm sure uh, I'd be happy to give some suggestions or I'm sure a lot of people here, um, there's a lot of fun things to do in LA, like Koreatown, all the beaches are really pretty. Um, there's the Hollywood hike. Um, it's a pretty hard hike, I heard. Um, and then like, you know, museums, like a lot of sporting events. Uh, UCLA has a lot of school spirit. So like their games are really like uh, crowded, like and everything. Um, I had a little picture over there. We went, um, me and a, a group of people, we went to Chinatown um, and we just, we bought some plants and yeah, that was just a really fun day. Uh, a lot of good food around here. So remember that you're a person first and a dental student second. Okay, so we've got some questions about um, like starting teeth, col um, collecting teeth. And I think Noemi emailed you guys something, um, but pretty much you guys will need to start collecting teeth. The earlier, the better, because I feel like it's never a bad thing to have too much teeth. and. Um, you'll realize that even as a D1, I spent so much money already on the plastic teeth. It's insane. And so pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to want to collect like clean extracted teeth. And a lot of the office will like take care of that part for you unless you're physically doing it at the office yourself. If you have the opportunity to work at like an oral surgeon or a perio office or something like that. And you can make your own jars. So you'll want to dilute household bleach in like a glass jar with just regular water. So you want to do a ratio of one part bleach to 10 parts water. And when you transport the jar, like with the teeth and stuff, make sure that's in a sealable bag, just in case any spillage, like stuff like that. And some tips that you can um, use to help find offices to start doing this process is just like call them. You can look them up and just say like, hey, I'm a dental student. They get it. It's not a weird question for them. If you asked anyone else, like, hey, can I like collect teeth? Like, they'll be like, what? They get it. So um, some offices that do a lot of extractions are offices like oral surgeons. And then also perio, they do a lot of extractions too. And sometimes perio, they'll have um, like better teeth to provide you because it's probably more of like a tissue or bone issue versus like significant decay or trauma with an oral surgeon. And yeah. And then on the next slide, um, it shows kind of what you should maybe have on the jar, what kind of jars you can use. Any glass jar works. You can recycle any old like pasta sauce jar or any pickle jars. Um, you can even go to like Goodwill or a thrift store and get like any mason jar there or even at Target grocery stores, they have mason jars. And what you want to do is label it. So you can just get a, like a regular piece of paper and then just like put tape around it, like packing tape, or you can use like a label maker itself. And some good things to put on there is your name, your contact number, uh, tell them what the solution is in the jar. So you can just say like one to 10 parts bleach to water, or you can, um, yeah. So in that little picture just kind of shows um, what you would want to label it. And then we did have some other questions about um, just, UCLA in general, someone asked how transportation is. And we do have a free bus system for students, which is nice, especially if you do plan on like living off campus, you don't necessarily always need to drive. The bus is an option. And Jordan mentioned like birds as well. Like I know him and Adam bird from the boulevard. And <laughs> that's like really impressive for me because I won't even get on a bird. Um, so it's totally doable to get around in Westwood and like um, the LA area all the way to Santa Monica too. 
And there's multiple bus stops throughout Westwood and there's a lot of different routes. So it's doable. It just will take a little bit longer time because of all the different stops that they take. And we kind of briefly went over this, but someone asked, how do you find a mentor? So I know that like navigating dental school can be really difficult and scary, but we try and make it as um, resourceful as possible. We've all been there, we've all done that. So we get what it's like. And we do have the D1, D2 big little program, which you guys will be matched with a D2 at the time, uh, the D1s currently. And you'll find out around uh, the end of summertime who your big little um, match is. And then the dental fraternities is also another really good way that you can find like upperclassmen to help you out and clubs as well. You know, everyone's really helpful here at UCLA, which um, I know we say, but like, I hope you guys really do feel that when you do come onto campus, hopefully we'll all be on campus from the very start with you guys. Um, that's something that we didn't have. So yet we were still able to always find really helpful resources and mentors. And like someone mentioned in lab, if you're ever having questions about anything that you're doing, the D2s are always at school, whether or not they like want to be or not. Someone is always in lab. And even though their lives are so busy and they have so much going on, they've always been so helpful and kind. And even if you're intimidated going up to them, they'll swing by and just say like, hey, I'm sitting like a couple rows over. If you have any questions, like let me know. So it's always really nice to get feedback from upperclassmen because they also have tips and tricks about stuff that um, maybe wasn't covered during a lecture that actually ends up making the process a lot easier. So I think it's really helpful to um, talk to them and you know pick their brains. And then another question that we had was what kind of tech would you recommend? Um, obviously a laptop, it's like required for all students. Um, we do take our exams on currently CCLE, but I think we're transferring over to Canvas. So all of our exams for the most part are gonna be um, online, but in person. And a lot of our students, they have like Apple, Windows, Lenovo, HP, all different kinds of computers. So it's not like one's necessarily better than the other. But for example, if you do have like a Chrome, I don't know if that one's accepted, like a Chromebook, because you do need to get the lockdown browser. So just be aware of that. And then another common um, piece of technology that a lot of our class uses is a tablet, whether that be like an iPad or a Surface or like the Lenovo Yoga Pad or whatever it's called. Um, it's really nice to be able to take like handwritten notes on the slides that uh, the professors they'll post on online. So that's personally what I like to do. I'll download that and use like GoodNote or people use OneNote or um, Notability and just take notes directly on the slides that they posted. And in terms of size and storage, I would say it's kind of a preference. Um, I personally have uh, the iPad Pro. I got like the 12 whatever inch and I have the 256 gigabyte. And from, I only use it for school. And from the beginning of fall quarter to now I looked I've only used about 50 gigabytes of my storage and that's not using any like cloud storage or anything. So if you do get like a smaller uh, storage, you can always just like upload it to the cloud or if you get um, something that doesn't use the cloud, I would still just like always back up your stuff just in case like something happens or when you are finished with the quarter, you can just like delete it off of your actual iPad and then have it saved elsewhere. I'm not too familiar with how all that technology works. Um, and then we did have another question that I didn't have time to add it into the slide, but someone asked about family housing and UCLA does offer family housing. Um, I spoke to a classmate that had participated in it as an undergrad and um, she is commuting currently, but I think she's she said that she was gonna start looking into it again, possibly for D2 year. And she said that dental students uh, have priority for first years and it's very affordable. And she said that there's an elementary school right across the street. So it makes things a little bit um, easier to like figure out where um, your child might go to school and in terms of how, how to get them to and from school. And they said that there is like UCLA daycare, but she said it was like very expensive. 
she said that it was more than her tuition when she was in undergrad. So she's like, I didn't go through with that. I'm not exactly sure what she did in terms of childcare. So if that's something that you were interested in, I'd be more than happy to um, possibly connect you guys if you guys had any more questions about that. Okay, well, the, yeah, so here's some links for like the class Slack, group me and Facebook page. Um, but yeah, I think our school is transitioning to the school wide Slack. So it's really organized. I really like it. it like you can organize everything by uh, subjects. So like the every class has a new Slack and then we archive the old like group chats uh, for every class once it moves on to a new quarter. So yeah, so here's just links. Um, yeah, Adeline and Adeline posted them. Oh, and the QR code is nice. All right, well, I'll stop share just so we can answer any questions that you guys have. Um, I know, that might have been, it's a wealth of information. It's kind of like a fire hydrant of information, but I hope it's the information that you need at this stage. I hope it's gotten you excited about starting. We're certainly excited to have you here. Um, at this point, it should be a feeling of excitement for starting the four years, like the beginning of the rest of your life, I guess. Um, starting dental school, super exciting. Yeah. So does anyone have any specific questions about things that we covered or other things that we didn't cover? You're welcome to unmute or put it in the chat. I think we stayed on top of the chat pretty well, but if we missed anything, feel free to bounce it back again. Uh, yeah, hand raised, Sarah, you can either unmute or whatever works. Sure. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much again for doing this for us. I was just wondering um, how long are the leases at Hillgard and Weyburn? The leases? Um, I'm pretty sure the other uh, leases, it's by year, but you can renew your lease for up to three years. And then after three years, I don't think you can stay at UCLA. I'm not okay. sure if you can reapply. You can stay if you're on the Weyburn Housing Association. So I think the entire Weyburn House Housing Association is dental students because no one wants to leave just because the clinic's right here. So it's so gosh darn convenient. Um, but if you don't get that position, then yes, you have to leave after three years. But you don't have to leave your single apartment per se. So I've been in this place for two years and I'll probably stay in this exact same unit for a third year, if that makes sense. It does. And I was wondering also, you guys mentioned RAs. Are any of you guys RAs or do you know the process of becoming one? I just like met our, or my RA in Sycamore. Um, so I can definitely reach out to him and put you in contact if you'd like me to, um, but I don't know anything about the process of getting there, um, but I can definitely find out and put you in contact if you'd like. Okay, sure. Thank you guys. Of course. And then we got one in the chat from Caroline. Okay. Um, but, okay, so I guess the financial aid question, uh, applying for housing, I don't believe I did it um, in April, unless are you planning on, if, are you, if you're planning on moving in early, I don't know if the lease can start that early for, um, for the Weyburn leases, at least, I believe you, the earliest they start, maybe like summer, so like, July, June, July, August, 
or yeah, June, July. So that's when you can start moving in. Um, but yeah, the application opens in April, the end of April, but we don't hear back until around June, July. Um, and then I think I was one of the earlier people that started the leases. So I started at the end of July and we don't get our money until around October. So, or the beginning, of, beginning of October, end of September. So I had to pay like the first two or three months just out of pocket. And then you kind of get reimbursed again once you get your financial aid money. But yeah, it's kind of up to you. You get to pick when you want to start your lease. Um, and it can be as late as like the week before school starts. Um, it's just really up to when you're able to come down to LA. But if you do earlier, you do have to pay kind of out of pocket. There was another question in the chat about um, the NHSC scholarship. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with it. Um, it is the National Health Service Corps scholarship and they'll pretty much pay for your school expenses and repay you go and serve in the community in an underserved community. Brian and I next Friday will be doing a little like mini lecture series about scholarships, um, pretty much all the ones that are like full ride. So if you're more curious about that, feel free to uh, join next week. You can find updates on the Instagram page or you can go ahead and directly message myself. I have the NHSC scholarship and then Brian um, he has the, which one is it? Um, I'm under the HPSP. So that's like the military one. So if you guys have questions about that, you can reach out to me as well. Yeah, so go ahead and um, reach out to either of us. And then there was another question about the BLS certification. Um, Noemi, she'll be sending you guys an email about like important deadlines that you guys will need to have and the, the BLS and like immunization stuff will be on there. The BLS, they want it to be like 